Hey guys, welcome to the ACH Automotive channel. Today we're working on uh, putting the gas tank together for our 1997 Ford Mustang Super Coupe swap project. Um, we're also going to probably work on putting the heads and head gaskets on the block um, so that we can start prepping that and just a little bit of Super Coupe swap stuff today. We have pretty much all the parts we need to get this gas tank back in the car. I have a brand new gas tank. This came from LMR. It was like a hundred bucks. Um, came with the seals and the new uh, clips. Um, I bought a new uh, filler neck o-ring, new hardware to put it in the car. We're not going to probably get to that today because I've got to order some Pour 15. I've got a new sending unit and a new uh, pump kit along with a Walbro uh, 255 uh, liter per hour pump. So I think it's LMR part number LRS-9350D. Um, not sure, maybe GSS340 is the Walbro number, but it's definitely a Walbro pump. And it came with the, the parts kit. Have a new uh, O-ring and EVAP, I think it's the EVAP valve, um, OEM valve here. It sits on the tank or it's a pressure valve. Um, part number is E7DZ-9B593-A. And then this is the factory uh, rubber grommet that it sits in, part number F6TZ-9076. And then we also have a new pump assembly here without a pump because we're going to put our Walbro, brand new Walbro pump, pump in it. This also came from LMR and it too came with a, so I have a spare uh, ring and seal there. Um, this is part number fm dash. EF042, it's made by ACP, Ford part number F4ZZ-9A407-B, um, so it's the fuel pump bracket with the gasket and lock ring, and it'll fit the 94 to 97 Mustang, so you can see we've got that here, we're going to put our brand new pump in, and that'll go in the tank, we'll wire it up, we'll put it in the tank, put our sending unit in the tank, basically we're going to get all these parts in the tank today. All right, let's take our fuel pump bracket here. Let's get this squared away. The wiring is kind of bent up there a little bit. Let's open up our fuel pump and see what that takes to get into the, into the assembly here. <coughs> Brand new Walbro GSS. 340G3 is the part number that's stamped on it. And it's actually, it's made in the United States. That's pretty cool. So they got caps on it to keep the dirt out. So we'll just set this aside here for a moment. And let's open up our, our parts kit and see what we got here. Got a new rubber line, which will probably go... It's been a while since I put one of these together, so... Take a look here. Yeah, I'm gonna guess that's gonna go like that. So I think the pump's gonna sit in there like that. So this is a new hose. We'll just put a dab of just some white grease on it just to help it slide over. Uh, another O-ring gasket. This is our harness so what we will have to do and that plugs in there like so and let's take our covers off here these are tough to get off might have to take they got some seams in there just lightly take a utility knife here just to you can see the See the grooves, see the grooves that are in there? Just, that'll help. Get the cap off, there we go. Perfect. I think this actually had a tab on it at one point where you could pop it off, but it's no longer there. So that's out of the way. This bottom one, we might have to get a little like tiny flat blade or something to assist with it. There we go. Just work it off. You don't want any dirt getting in, getting in there, so 
that out of the way for the moment. We'll just take a little bit of white grease. It's just a little dab. It really doesn't have to be that much. And I just put a little over the nozzle here. And before we put that hose on, we are going to A, get ourselves a flat blade. And we are going to put the clamp on the hose. The hose over. You know, see the grease makes it much easier to go in. And we're just going to gently snug the clamp so it's in place. Alright, there we go. We'll have to come back and tighten that after. I just want to make sure everything fits in place first. We are going to... see where's our instructions here. Alright, so this fuel pump... This, this is the fuel pump isolator. And it needs to go on the fuel pump like this. Might have to adjust it. I actually have to put this in beforehand. So it has a little notch on the bottom. You want that to go down. There we go. Now we've got to figure out how the fuel pump goes in here. I might have to loosen up these Phillips head screws at the top here. Yes, that's what we need to do. So you will need yourself a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm going to loosen this bracket up here. The instructions want us to actually take it off, so that's what we're going to do. Actually, I don't think we have to take it off. I'll put our isolator back on there. Alright, I got the original, this is the original fuel pump that was in it when I got the car. Um, just for orientation purposes, I just wanted to see, I went and dug it out to see how the fuel pump sat in there. And we are on the right track. The fuel pump sits in there just like this. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of our white grease here. Not a lot, doesn't need to be a lot, just a dab. Smear it around the nozzle here so the hose goes on easy. We are going to take our clamp, make sure our clamp is on, and we're going to slide the hose onto the pump, just like so. There we go. And the clamp is out this way on this guy. Put that there, down at the bottom. Now we can put our side screws back in here. And actually, this is going to be fun because this pump, the terminals are in a different location. So we might have to, before we do this, let me think about this here for a second. Might have to put these, this terminal in before we put this together. There we go. Snap that in place. Yep, so we're gonna sit it. We're gonna end up sitting this in here kind of like this and run the cables up through the side. I've got to turn the isolator because it's it it cocked. Now we can put our screws back in.
Now, normally if this was a stock pump going in, you would just connect those two uh, leads, this the positive and negative, but this is not a stock pump. This is a Walbro aftermarket, 255 liter per hour uh, fuel pump. So we have to adapt its harness to the factory harness. So now we're gonna tighten our clamps down. We'll use a Phillips head for this because it's a little bit easier. that tightened up this is your return oops as I bumped the camera tighten these guys up here snug there there we go so we've just put our Walbro 255 LPH uh, pump in our pump bracket for our 97 Mustang um, we've tightened all the clamps we've got the plug in there for the pump put the cover back over just to keep dirt out of it for the moment and now what we need to do is we will need to splice these two wires together uh, or excuse me we'll have to splice the red with the red and the black with the black to provide power to the pump so that'll be another step um, I've got to figure out how to do that since it's going into a fuel tank and I've never done that before uh, they did give us some splice connectors um, not so sure I like that idea. I would prefer to solder and shrink wrap them, but I'm not sure if I can do that into a fuel tank. So I need to go consult with someone first. So let's put this aside for the moment. And I'm gonna put the fuel tank up here and we're gonna get the rest of the stuff in it. got our tank on the bench here we're gonna take our sending unit and one of the locks for it I think they're both the same size it's actually a very nice tank for a cheapy cheapy gas tank it's fairly well feels fairly well built so um, we need to put our gasket in. This guy goes down in here. You kind of got to cock it at an angle and hope that it fits. It's supposed to. There we go. This is, so this is your sending unit. This is what tells you, uh, tells your gauge uh, how much is in the tank. This is where the fuel pump goes. This is where the EVAP uh, plug goes or uh, which we'll call it uh, valve goes I don't believe yeah so it's gonna go so this can really only go in one direction <coughs> so we'll sit that in there like so <coughs> now these are lock rings they're kind of you can see see how it's not flat here or it starts flat but then it gets bent or bigger this is this is what keeps it in place so in order to get these into place we set it in finger tight first and then you can take a flat blade like this and the hammer and there are tabs up top here and we're gonna lock it into place my knife off the tank here and you'll lock it till it hits the stopper go so now our sending unit is in place you'll do the same thing for the fuel pump too. the fuel pump set in the same way so again you have these tabs that you tap on and then this is your tab that locks it in place let's find our evap unit we'll open this guy up here And this will stick in the hole 
like so, or it's supposed to. This too may be another case where you want to put a little bit of white grease on it, and somebody's probably going to yell at me for this, but just a little bit. It just helps. It helps the rubber get into the um, into the spot here. Now let's. So there's our EVAP rubber seal here, or purge valve rubber seal. Take our valve here. Open this guy up. And because that is fresh rubber, yeah, you're definitely gonna wanna put the dab there we go and you can adjust that in the car depending on where it's gonna go I don't remember because it's been a while so the last piece we have to do right now we have to, there's two pieces. We've got to put the filler neck grommet in, which we'll do. And then we've got to solder or crimp the connectors on the fuel pump and then the fuel pump can go in. And then this tank is ready to go in the car once I get the underside painted. Open up our filler neck grommet here. It's like so. And it's gonna sit in the tank like this and your filler neck's gonna go through like that. So let's come around to this side of the tank here. Put our knife away. <coughs> and let's see if we can get this guy in as well. Make these rubber O-rings much bigger than the hole is. Again, a little white grease helps a lot. Laugh all you want, but it helps. So, a little bit around the outside. It's gonna go, it's gonna go in there like this. All right, now we've got that in for now. We're gonna work, go back to the pump and work on the pump. I'm gonna stick this gas tank back in the box so it doesn't get damaged, but all the parts are on it. And it's, other than the pump, it's ready to go in the car. Um, we'll have to go under the car and I've got to get some pour 15 and get that painted up. And this tank will go back in the car. The, the brand new fuel lines from uh, Classic Tube are already positioned in the car. I have some clamps I've got to put on them. Um, so we'll get under there, paint everything put the clamps on the fuel tank, uh, on the, uh, on the fuel lines, just throw this guy back in the car. I've got brand new bolts and pins and clips to hold this in, brand new straps, um, cause the old ones were all kind of rusted out and gross from hanging around. So we have all that to go in the car. Um, I've got to clean the plastic, there's a plastic shield that goes underneath this. And then the back half of the car will be pretty much done at that point. Um, other than whatever I'm doing with the rear axle, which will be another project for another day. Uh, I just want the car to run for the moment, so. All right, so the last piece we need to do for this pump is to 
connect these wires together and I confirmed that we can use shrink wrap in the tank. It is uh, polyleofin, I think is how it's pronounced, is the material that this is made out of uh, and it is chemical resistant so it, will, it should be fine in the gas tank. We're waiting for our iron to heat up. We need to cut these guys to length. So what we're gonna do is, I am probably gonna cut it and leave a little slack in each of the lines. Actually use these guys because this is heavier gauge wire. We'll cut the both leads to be about the same length. It's fine if there's a little extra slack. Close enough. All right, find our correct size shrink wrap. That's a little, that should be good enough, I think. I am not the most skilled solderer in the world. Now let's move on to our negative side here. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna Trim it back a little bit here, twist them together, and I need to get another piece of shrink wrap. Okay, now we've got our solder joints done on our fuel pump here, and you can see that's the negative side, hopefully the camera picks up on that. We'll slide our shrink wrap up and over and we'll shrink it. pretty good right there. Got our connectors done, or excuse me, our harness done. Now we can pick up all this stuff here on the bench, put the tank back up on the bench, and put the pump in. All right, we've got our tank back up here on the bench. We will need to, no, that's a clip for that. We need to take our protective cover off here, so, and we need to put our, our fuel pump strainer on the bottom here. So this guy, and it just, it should just, I believe it just snips, sits right on the bottom. Okay, so we've got the, the pump unit sit in, seated in the tra tank. There's a baffle in here that it has to seat in properly. And because uh, there's an angle on the pump, I'll show you actually. All right, this'll be a good demo moment. So this is your, this is our old pump. And the baffle is like right down here in the tank and the hole is here. So the hole is not right above the baffle. Um, so this kind of goes down at an angle. So the um, you, there's only really one way for this pump to sit in here. So uh, I just needed to know what the direction so I can put the uh, strainer on. Now getting the strainer on seems to be the tricky part today. We need our strainer to go like this. And that is easier said than done. Well, let's try a little white grease. It's not probably necessary or needed in this situation, but I am having a hell of a time trying to get this to go on. So, don't want to get it in the strainer, you just want a little bit around the plastic. Let's see. There we go. All right. There we go, perfect. 
there's our strainer so a little just needed a little white grease on it so we've actually got to turn it strainers actually gonna go we've got to turn the strainer I think Squeeze that guy in there Fall off. There we go. Careful with your wires because the opening of the tank is a little sharp. There we go. Now, what we need to do is get the uh, strainer down into the baffle. Which, without, there we go. It should sit right in place, just like that. So that is all. Oh, <laughs> I forgot one piece before we put this back together. Um, there's a rubber gasket that's got to go in there, this guy. So we'll have to take this pump back out again, unfortunately. Now that I got, of course, now that I got it in place. All right. Let's see if we can do this without damaging anything. Actually, you know what? I might not have to take the whole pump out. Just slide it on like that. There we go. Reposition everybody. So the gasket will sit right down there in the groove. Come on, you brat. There we go, okay. Can now take our lock ring here and slide it over. Position it into place. And take our hammer, wherever our screwdriver might have gone. And we'll lock this guy into place. There we go, locked into place. Now we've put together our fuel tank with our new sending unit, new pump, new evap valve, uh, purge valve, uh, filler neck gasket. This tank is ready to go in the car. Um, what I need to do now is crawl under the car, wire wheel everything or clean everything up. I'm gonna pour 15 it with some chassis, or with uh, chassis saver I think is what it is. And that way it doesn't rust and it'll make it look much better underneath. We'll clean the plastic cover that goes under this, and we'll do that. That'll be in another video. I'm not going to have time to get to that today, unfortunately. Um, I was also hoping to get the heads and stuff on the motor, but not going to get to that in this video. So uh, pretty much it was just how to build the gas tank for our 97 Mustang Super Coupe swap. Um, working on trying to get back to the car. Um, I just bought all these parts. It's probably like $450 worth of parts I got from Alamar here for this swap. Like I said, fuel lines are already in it. I have new brackets for the fuel lines to kind of pin them up in place. We'll get those on the car um, and get the back half of the car back together. I've got to order my cam valve train and all that stuff for the motor so we can you know, finish putting that back together. I've got to get a clutch and a short shifter and then the transmission can go back in the car and it'll start to look like a car again. So hopefully you like this video. I know it's probably gonna be a little short today, guys, but uh, if, you, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down, leave me a comment, etc. cetera. Um, feel free to follow along on social media at ACH Automotive. I'll put links in the description. Um, Sorry for the delay in videos, Christmas time, etc. Um, my driveway is covered in ice, so I can't get my vehicles up here right now, um, or the delivery trucks for parts and things. So it's kind of been, videos have kind of been slow. Um, so stay tuned for more. Uh, hopefully you liked it. If you did, thumbs up. Uh, please feel free to subscribe. Turn on your post notifications as well. The little bell in the corner, uh, so you can see when I've posted 
posted the latest videos. And uh, stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching.